Paul knew that no matter what would come, he could rejoice because he knew God's unwavering commitment to honor Christ in him. You might think about it like this. Paul could rejoice both because he knew his God and because he knew himself. Because he knew his God and he knew himself. But because he knew what God is committed to and he knew what he was committed to. Do you have that? Do you see that in Paul and, and want that? I, I do. I want the depth of steadfast faith, of anchored assurance that Paul had as we face uncertainty in our times as well. We need to make sure we grasp the why. The why of our existence rightly to inform the what of our existence. In other words, we need to evaluate what we do in light of why we do anything anyway. And so I pray that the words of Apostle, the Apostle Paul in Philippians 1, 20-23 will help us to do so again today in a fresh and deeper way as we dig back into this passage to, to evaluate our existence, you might say, in light of the Spirit's inspired words through the Apostle Paul. I'm going to outline three reasons you can rejoice. Well, the last one we'll only mention. Well, these, these are like three tests. Three tests whether you have proper reasons to rejoice, to have joyful confidence as you look forward to the future. Three reasons that probe our, our hearts and minds, and I trust they will deepen our convictions with a readiness to rejoice no matter what may come. The first of those three points picks up a, a bit of a deeper review, you might say, of where we ended last week in verses 20 and 21 with an overall perspective on who God is and what God is always doing in the world. So go back there. Go back there to the end of verse 18, and let's read verse 18 into verse 21 to circle back to that again. And so just go back to that, and let's make that a first reason that you and I can rejoice like Paul did. Point number one, you can rejoice because God is devoted to glorifying Christ. You can rejoice because God is devoted to glorifying Christ. You do not need to doubt that or to fear whether that will happen or to despair over whether all is going to be lost because the God who rules over all has made clear what He is committed to in the universe that He made. Particularly when you have seen God's glory in Jesus Christ and His perfect life counted as your righteousness, then you can rejoice knowing He will glorify that Christ that you trust. Particularly when you've seen the glory of God and Christ on the cross paying for your sins forever, then you can rejoice knowing God will glorify that Christ whom you love. When you have seen God's glory and the victory of Christ and the resurrection and the ascension that He's coming back and you know it, then you know God will glorify that Christ that you long for. When you know who God is and who Christ is and you trust and love that God in Christ, you can rejoice. Because God is always devoted to glorifying Christ. And so that's, that's reason number one, just to make sure we grasp that. That's why we can rejoice no matter what. And I'm so thankful that many of you know that, and that's a bit of review for you. But as we look to the future and fight temptations to, to fear or despair or to despondency, we can rejoice, step back and know when we know God. But we need to see something a little more than that in the explanatory connection that verse 21 brings to that call to, to rejoice knowing God's goal we, we will not find reason for rejoicing in God's commitment to exalt Christ if, if we do not also define our existence as living to exalt Christ. You want to know you're always on the winning side? You're always going to succeed at what you're laboring for, what you're striving toward. You have a goal you're, you're pursuing. You want to always have confident boldness that, that what you are living for can never, ever, ever fail. That only comes when your purpose merges with God's purpose. But it does come in that powerful way. 
when, when, when we gladly submit to and embrace God's purpose of glorifying Christ in everything, then we will rejoice. And so that's a second point. You can rejoice because you're a devoted to glorifying Christ, if that's true of you. Not only can we rejoice if we trust Christ, that God is devoted to glorifying Christ. That was point number one. But, but as we truly grasp, we truly embrace God's purpose for our purpose, we have, we have more reason to rejoice. And in that sense, you can rejoice if or hopefully because you are devoted to glorifying Christ, to be prepared to rejoice. Because we know God is committed to, devoted to glorifying Christ, and we are devoted to glorifying Christ. And then thirdly, and we'll just mention this this morning, you can rejoice thirdly because you're delighted by gaining Christ. You're delighted by gaining Christ, and we'll get to that next week. 